Hey there, all you true crime fans. I'm Amanda. And I'm Corey. And this is Colorado Crime. If you're new here, we cover cases from coast to coast with a special emphasis on cases that happen right here in colorful, crime-filled Colorado. If you're returning, thanks for being here. All right, guys. Corey, are you ready for your joke this week? Of course. Why are chickens so funny? Why? Because, <laughs> uh, and he's gonna be so proud of you. It's her favorite it's my joke. Favorite. It's my favorite joke too. <laughs> she called my dad and told him and everything. Uh, it's funny. I walked around work like the last week because I saw it on TikTok, and I just walked around telling people, and people are like, "It's not funny anymore." And I'm like, "No, it's still funny." <laughs> it's still funny to me (laughs) oh that's so funny Uh, that is funny i love that all right guys so i do have an update in the idaho murder case for you um after the suspected murderer left his college campus he was headed to his parents house in pennsylvania and apparently he was missing for several hours before he was spotted again here in colorado um the fbi has denied this saying it's false information so i guess we'll see what happens in court um and also kaylee goncalves's family is fighting back against the unusually strict gag order so on january 18th the order was expanded to ban any attorneys representing survivors witnesses or the victim's families from talking or writing about the case which is just like so crazy to me And again, like I've mentioned before that I believe a gag order is a really good way at protecting the integrity of the case, you know, because ultimately a conviction is what we need. But I've never seen a a gag order this restrictive. Have you? I have not. um, I don't know why you couldn't talk to people about it. Uh, Like your family members were killed. I think I think you need to be able to talk about your unalived family members. Like, I don't, I don't understand that at all. I guess to keep people from discussing it for like jury selection, but I mean, that doesn't really, I mean, he was on the news. So, oh God, he was wanted, live like, under a nationwide. Rock. Yeah. 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 I wonder if that, I was just thinking about this. I wonder if that order extends to like, counselors like a grief counselor i don't know yeah i don't know because that would be ridiculous right you couldn't even go to therapy about it because you couldn't talk to your therapist right in case they got called into jury duty like hmm? right and i think Hmm. like i do think that there's more to the case than what has been released so far which is another reason why i think the gag order is in place oh i mean probably but I don't know. Um, And also, there's been, like, so much speculation in this case. Um, And we really do try to only discuss information that's been confirmed. And just so you guys know, TikTok is not a credible source. And we won't cover most of what's discussed there unless, like, a news source confirms it. I know. I know. Don't get me wrong. Like, I love TikTok and I spend way too much time there. Like, an embarrassing amount of time. Me too. I'm always 25 videos deep into something. Like I follow I follow this TikToker. She's in um Massachusetts, I think. Massachusetts <laughs> or Missi- Michigan. I don't know. Um but she does this call this program. Um it's actually called Project Home Again. And um I think it's Massachusetts. But they have a lot of um uh uh-uh like unhoused people that they um, give uh, bedding and furniture and like kitchen stuff to like, so I follow her um, while she's like um, picking for families and stuff like that. It's a pretty cool, it's a pretty cool little program. I love that. Yeah. I'll have to check her out. That's cool. And I follow a lot of Sims players. Fair whatever (laughs) i follow like makeup people or i follow a lot of true crime on there oh and like (laughs) i do follow this lady 
I think her name's Katie. I should probably know this because, like, I am so invested in this woman's life. She owns <laughs> a farm. Her, I think it's her, her parents, and her husband own a farm in Tennessee. Uh-huh. And it's foaling season right now. Oh. And their horse, Gracie, just had a new foal. And her name is Penelope. And <laughs> I, too, have a Penelope, but she is not a baby pony. She is a dog. Baby puppy. But I'm not talking to her right now. She's a bad dog. It's not funny. I follow a farm. I follow follow a farm lady on there who um has emus. Oh no way! Yeah. Oh my gosh, is it the Karen one? Yes. Oh my gosh, that thing is so mean. So much. (laughs) Oh god, that's so funny. That bird is so mean. They kind of scare me. They're like a dinosaur to me. (laughs) <laughs> they are kind of scary but i like that she has like these names for them and then she has like llamas or not llamas alpacas <laughs> oh god i like when she puts the emus like she puts them in costumes <laughs> oh yeah me too like their little emu sweater she is <laughs> oh that's she's so funny, funny. <laughs> she is funny she is funny <laughs> there that uh horse lady she also has two baby cows oh and i love cows i actually have my cow cup right here but she has two little baby cows and they're named poppy and petunia oh i know i know they're really cute they're like those fluffy highland cows they're oh yeah cute. like a little like those cute little like yeah. the cow you'd want to snuggle yeah 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 like they mm-hmm. kind of look like those little like i don't know i don't know what they're called i've never seen star wars but we were at target and saw a toy and it looked like a baby cow i thought i don't know what it's called don't come for me. I've never seen Star Wars. I'm sorry. I I, mean, I take it back. I take back my reference because I don't know what I'm talking about. So in other news, Aiden Fucci, he is the 16-year-old who was accused of, st- of stabbing his 13-year-old classmate in 2021. So his trial was actually set to start this week. And like, I'm going to be honest, I am, I'm pretty judgy. Um, but I do try to like be open. Um, but like I fucking hate this kid. I think that this kid is like the worst of the worst. Um, Court, have you stayed up on this case at all? Um, no. Uh if I'm being honest, I'm terrible with keeping up with current events and it's gotten worse since we moved away. Like, I don't know. I don't know what's happening with anything. So unless it's been on Dateline, I have no idea. Um, I'm a really amazing co-host. So (laughs) there's that. (laughs) Uh, So true crime is like really the only news that I keep up on. Um, Or whatever Chris tells me. Or TikTok. Just kidding. (laughs) Um, But so here's a little overview for those of you who aren't as familiar So Tristan Bailey was a 13-year-old cheerleader in Florida. She was reported missing on the morning of Mother's Day in 2021 after she didn't attend Mother's Day breakfast. She was last seen around midnight the day before. Unfortunately, her body was discovered around 6 p.m. and it was apparent that she had been stabbed to death. Aiden Fucci actually admitted to being with Tristan the night before at a friend's house. Um, And then the two were seen walking together down the street by surveillance. So at first he denied any involvement with her disappearance. And he told investigators that she had walked a different direction from him. But then he changed his story and said that the two had a verbal altercation and he pushed her on the ground and she hit her head. Um, He's also the kid who was seen on, I believe it was Snapchat, posting like a selfie from the squad car saying something about like oh where's Tristan before it was really even released that he was being looked at um but I mean being the typical piece of shit that he is he changed his story multiple times um and it was announced that she actually was stabbed 114 times and had several defensive wounds that's a lot of stab wounds. Like 114 is a, well, that's some anger that he had behind that. Like, you know, stabbings are crimes of passion. So maybe she, he, this is so 1970s. Um, just because a boy likes a girl doesn't mean he has to be mean to her. And the, uh, and the same is true. If a girl likes a boy, you don't have to be mean to each other. You can just be nice and you can just say, Hey, I like you. 
You don't have to stab them or punch them or pull their hair or any other mean things. I agree. Like, let's let's just stop that now. That's ridiculous to me. Yeah. It's, it's not okay. <laughs> so he actually had two knives, I guess, that, like, everybody knew about. And they were called, like, Pierce and Poke or something. Um, and then when it was released that she was she had been stabbed that's kind of when police started to look at Aiden <clears throat> and then a search warrant was conducted at his home and that's pretty much what like sealed the case um there was clothing found with Tristan's blood on it and then his mom was arrested also in 2021 for tampering with evidence after she washed blood off of his clothes like, literally, the blood of a 13-year-old. And she was just like, oh, I'll wash this off. It's just like juice. That's terrible. I know. F her. Mm -hmm. Um. So, like, we talked about it in the last episode. Like, I have no loyalty to anyone who decides so callously, might I add, to take someone from this world. Like, no loyalty at all. Me neither. If you tell me you murder somebody, I'm probably going to tell the police. I know. I mean, most likely, because I can't keep a secret for shit. So no, me either. If you tell me a secret, it, you're probably gonna somebody's gonna know about it. Like I can't, <laughs> can't do it. <laughs> I'm Please not murder. terrible. If you murder, different. keep it to yourself. <laughs> <laughs> yes, don't tell anybody. <laughs> God, sure way to get caught. <laughs> That's so funny. I'm good with secrets, but like, if it's an important one, I'm sorry, I'm totally telling. Yeah, but if you're like, hey, I got. I mean, I'll try. Like, I'll try my best, but sometimes yeah, like I just get or too excited. Mm -hmm. Oh, presents are my downfall. Emerson, too. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, I just want to give – if I buy you a present, I just want to give it to you because I'm so excited about it. <laughs> oh, my gosh. So, shout out to my sister-in-law, Janie. Hi, Janie. So, every year we, like, buy each other something for Christmas, and we're like, hey, so your present came. I know it's, like, December 1st. Do you want to see the shirt I got you? Like, we are the worst. <laughs> Yeah, that's how I just, am. Like, we're just totally fine with it. Yeah. I love it. Candace um, so is anyway. always yelling at me. <laughs> <laughs> like, Damn it, Corey. So don't tell prize. them. And I'm like, sorry. <laughs> Too late. I that's Emerson. <laughs> or Emerson won't tell you, and she's like, hey, I got you something. And you're like, oh, yeah? What is it? Well, I can't tell you, but you could wear it. Oh, yeah? <laughs> yeah, like, like. You know, like, <laughs> uh, on your arms. And you're like, oh, really? So it's a bracelet? Shirt? Well, I'm not going to tell you, but, like, you're going to really like it. There's cows on it. And you're like, oh, so you got me, like, a cow shirt? No, 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 no. Yes. <laughs> Great. Thanks, Emerson. <laughs> Always. So anyway, so Aiden Fucci was actually 14 at the time of the murder. Like, 14, guys. Let that sink in for just a minute because I have three 14-year-old nieces. Like, I cannot even imagine if something, like, if, one, if they were committing crimes like this. And, like, if something happened to them, I, that just, they're still in middle school. Like, that's crazy to me. Hold on. My dog <laughs> has something. Lincoln was pulling a prank on us and made the toilet smoke this morning. <laughs> <laughs> which is why there was there's like two toilet paper rolls on top and then like uh, a little paper or a toilet paper roll inside the lid so it looks uh -huh. like the toilet's smoking well anyway <laughs> luna was like oh look a paper towel roll and then she was eating like the little toilet cap thingies that's funny <laughs> she's being so bad <laughs> yes when we come visit you i'm sure lincoln will i'm sure you'll have smoking toilets too it's like Lincoln's, like, signature move. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> okay. So, back to Aiden Fucci. Um, he did plead guilty this week to first-degree murder, actually, on Monday. So, he faces the possibility of life in prison, but won't face the death penalty because he was a minor at the time of the murder. And apparently, he's being, like, a total peach in jail, too. He spent his time there threatening to kill other inmates and corrections officers and even their families. So, I definitely don't think that he's someone who deserves to see the light of day again. And my heart just goes out to Tristan's family. I just think it's such a devastating loss for her family and her community. 
And I hope that Aiden Fucci rots in the pits of hell because F that kid. Right. At least um, at least it's not like the 1970s and, and 80s where there were a lot of serial killers. They knew they know about him right away. So he just wasn't going around killing people forever. True. You know what I mean? He killed. He's probably killed. I mean, animals and things like that. But if he hadn't gotten caught, I see him being a serial murderer. Oh, like, absolutely. For sure. For sure. Absolutely. He's one of those kids who's like thinks he's like so cool and like he's got this right. cr- like street cred. Right. Y- he's a punk. Yeah. I hate that kid. Man, I can't imagine your 14-year-old. Mm, I have a 14-year-old nep- nephew. He's not a murdering kind. He's a sweet kid. Like he would never <laughs> murder any. He would never murder anyone. Like I want to snuggle him right now. He's so cute. <laughs> Thank you for not murdering people. <laughs> right? <laughs> no, it's it's so true. Like please, I hope you don't ever murder anybody. Um, hey, do you want to give us an update on the Murdoch trial? Have you been keeping up with it? Um, uh, also no. But okay. Alex Murdoch is a crazy mofo like that guy, man. He I just I don't I just don't understand what what's what like he I, I just I don't even know like <laughs> I can't even explain like how do you he he fi- finds his wife and son dead and it turns out he shot them but he's actually um they're like it's a poorly handled uh investigation but he's also in financial trouble and he also had a he also has a lawsuit against him because um of a boat crash that his son was or that his son was driving at the time and yeah he killed a kid yeah it's just a whole (laughs) like that whole family as a whole jacked up like that that i can't even i I don't know it all seems so like theatrical Right, right. Kind of like um what's that name? What's that? I don't remember. Oh yeah, I do feel like he's just there's too many like cuz I've looked into it now since last week. There's too many like little things that are like, "Oh, this was out of place. This was out of place. This was out of place." That like if it was one or two things, you wouldn't notice it. Right. But because right. there's like so many of these incidents, you're like, uh, okay, now this is getting like real suspicious. Yeah. Okay. So before we jump into this, Robert week- Durst. Oh. He was a real estate guy. That's yes. who I'm. Yes. Yes. That dude was also crazy. And it, it seems like it's kind of like a similar, like the story is kind of similar. You know what I mean? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, and he's like 400 years old. uh, He's dead now. Yeah, he looked awful, though. Yeah, he died from COVID. Yeah, he just died this last year. Mm Mm-hmm. Yep. But yeah, he looked like he was like 400. Yeah. he was only, he wasn't that old. He was what? 78. 78. Yeah. Mm Mm-hmm. 78. Crazy guy. But yes, very similar. I agree. Okay, so before we jump into this week's episode, I have a little story for you. And, like, okay. I saved this one so I could tell you while we were recording because I needed to get your reaction. Okay. So, I do a pre-prom drinking and driving program. And I had a meeting last week at my old high school. And, like, my last name's not the same anymore. And I don't know. I hope I don't look like I'm still 18. I mean, kind of. <laughs> well, <laughs> fine. Well, so I'm standing up there and I'm talking and we do our whole spiel and then there was a dog there. So I had to go meet the dog. So I'm talking to the dog and somebody comes up to me and I was like, hi. And it was my former teacher. So shout out to Miss Gustad. And she was like, oh my gosh, I didn't know it was you at first. I didn't recognize your, your name. And I'm sitting so far in the back that I didn't recognize your face. She said, but the second you started talking, I recognized your voice. <laughs> cool. <laughs> I'm like, great. So, <laughs> so uh, apparently you've got this mousy voice since high school. <laughs> apparently, like, I'm stuck with it, guys. I know. So I thought it was pretty funny. So, but shout out to Miss Gustad and to her um, newspaper staff. If you guys are listening, you're all awesome. And thank you so much. 
Uh, that was a funny story. I'm so glad you waited to tell me that. Um, I know. I knew you would be. <laughs> best podcast co-host ever. <laughs> <laughs> oh, stop it. You're so kind. I know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, should we just, like, jump right into it? Sure. Cool. So, this week, we're discussing the kidnapping and murder of a um, woman named Virginia May. Um, she was the oldest in her close-knit family, and she was almost 34 years old. She was a wife and mother of two. She had a son and a daughter, and her her and her husband ran a ranch out in Byers, Colorado. And she also had the unfortunate bad luck of being Gary Lee Davis and his wife, Rebecca Fincham's neighbor and employer. Jenny, as she was called by her family, also lived with her sister-in-law, Sue McLennan. Honestly, there isn't a whole lot about Jenny, which is so unfortunate. Older cases are so hard to research, which totally bums me out. I just think it's so unfair to the victims and their families. Like, their murderers have, like, Wikipedia pages and Murderpedia pages and, like, articles and blogs and, you know, the whole gamut. So you can find out anything you want on the vic- or on the murderer. But, like, the victims, you get their tombstone. You get to know where their tombstone's located. And I just think that it's really unfair to them. I just feel like there should be something somewhere that memorializes these these victims who lost their lives. Yeah, instead of, I mean, I get get the murderer part of it because everybody wants to know about that. But there, I mean, there are victims. That's why they're murderers. Like, we should we should know a little bit more about their lives and like how they were as people and why, why, like, I don't, I don't understand that either. Um, but she actually was targeted after Davis and Fincham had, had had two previous failed attempts at kidnapping people. Can you imagine? Um, no, actually. Third time's a charm, I guess. <laughs> right. <laughs> so on July 18th, um, 1986, just three days before Ginny went missing, The couple actually tried to kidnap another woman. Her name was Tammy Beaupre, and she lived about 10 minutes away in Wiggins, which is also in Colorado. Um, And she was visited by a couple driving a green four-door sedan with Kansas plates. Later, Tammy actually identified the couple. Um, They stopped at her house, and they asked for directions, and they asked if her husband was home. And when she confirmed that he was, they left. That's so crazy. It is. Tammy totally could have been... Mm-hmm. In their, their first victim. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She dodged a bullet. <laughs> or 14. <laughs> yeah. I mean, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> so Davis actually uh, worked for Virginia and her husband. So they were out laying some fence and stuff like that. And he had just um used the restroom outside because when you live on a farm you use the restroom outside but while he after he was done using the restroom he uh waggled his junk at virginia um (laughs) a couple of days before he decided to kidnap her and he was like come on virginia come to me i'm so ready for you he was obsessed with her um he mentioned how much he liked her multiple times waggled his junk I think that's like the best description ever. And I'm only <laughs> laughing at that. I wasn't laughing at what happened to Virginia. I know. Because I, yeah, it, that's it sad. Really but waggling your junk is pretty funny. Can you imagine like doing an airplane or whatever dudes do with their junk? I don't know. Oh my gosh. I know. I really <laughs> think sometimes it's wasted on men. <laughs> it really is. Like youth is wasted on. No, what is it? Youth is wasted on the young. Is that what it is? I think so. Whatever it is. I feel that like. <laughs> I think I just want to try it one time. Right. Me too. Um, I think disclaimer, it'd be cool to write some of our notes. stuff you shouldn't try at home. Don't waggle your junk at people. Do not waggle your junk at people. You will become a sex offender. You <laughs> yeah, will have to no register. Waggle. Don't waggle your junk at people. No um, junk waggling. Some of our quotes aren't factual. <laughs> we like don't you're... know. We don't know everything. <laughs> it's like you're hanging out with your best friends. I'm talking about junk waggling. <laughs> <laughs> and listening to our stomachs growl because I'm so sorry, guys. You were bound to hear it in this episode. It's it is loud. I'm so sorry. <laughs> so um, Rebecca Davis's lovely wife called Sue McLennan, who 
as we previously stated, is Virginia's sister-in-law. Earlier in the in the evening, um, about some children's clothing clothing that she wanted to give Sue and her children. So Rebecca and Gary drove over there, but fortunately for Sue, her husband was home. So Becky just had a glass of tea, and Davis never got out of the car. So lucky for Sue, she was also going to be victim number two. So they continued this ruse, and she later on in the evening called Ginny and called her about the same thing. Hey, we have some children's clothes for you. And when the pair showed up to Ginny's house, she was actually expecting them. So she came out on the porch and she was holding her four-year-old daughter, Krista. Becky lured the pair to the shed with a request to borrow some wire stretchers, which um, you use for putting up fence. And Gary was hiding in the shed and he punched Jenny in the face and then drug her to the car. And then Becky shooed Krista back into the house. Um, there have been many speculations um, as to what happened after, but the following account is thought to be the most accurate. So while I was researching this case, I found that Gary was actually corresponding with a woman from Ireland who flew here to Colorado to visit him while he was awaiting trial. And then he was also writing a local Denver woman who was like a prison activist. Um, and the two wrote back and forth like pen pal style for 10 years. And she says that she doesn't even believe he ever told her the truth about that day. I don't, I don't think he has ever told anybody the truth. I think his version in his head is what the truth is. I don't think every, anyone will ever know the truth about what really, really happened. Um, I just know that those two were like some crazy people. Couple killers are like, you know, a lot of times they say that either one or the other of the the couple is being influenced by the other one. And I don't think that's true in this case. I think both of those two were messed up and whatever, like did some jacked up stuff. Um, so they, um, those, they, Gary drug, um, Jenny to the car and stripped her naked and then dragged her out of the car with a rope around her neck. Davis attempted but may have failed to have sex with her despite his testimony in court that he assaulted May repeatedly for years afterward. He insisted that he did not rape her, which could be true, um, but not for lack of trying. I hope he couldn't get it up. He probably couldn't, but who knows? Like, maybe I hope he not. couldn't get it up because Rebecca was there. I don't know. But... Then he forced her to engage in oral sex with Rebecca. Can you imagine? Like, I don't know. It's so, they're such an odd couple. Like, I don't, I don't get it. Oh, yeah. And, like, she was just a young mom. Mm -hmm. You know, living mm -hmm. on a farm in Byers. And at the, at the time, I'm, you know, it was kind of, like, taboo. Right. So yeah. I'm sure she was really just. Trying to live her life. Yeah. And, like, yeah. be a good wife and, you know, help her husband with their business. And then right. these two show up. Right. But I did find that this was, like, sort of their shtick. Gary felt that his marriage to Rebecca was unsatisfactory. And so he began to look at shmornography. Are we allowed to say pornography? I mean, you said unalived, so I went with shmornography. Oh, nice. I just feel like unalived is better than, um, I don't know. Because I watch too much TikTok. Murder. <laughs> I know that's what I thought too. Um, but yeah, like they, he said that they would go like, quote, cruising for a pretty girl. And um, they apparently had this like shared fantasy of like picking up a girl and then taking her out to the country and raping her. He actually was uh. quoted saying that, that that was one of their fantasies. That's so weird. Um, he also didn't feel like Rebecca was attractive enough. So I think that was also part of his problem. Like he wasn't attracted to her. So I think having these, these forced threesomes was the way to make her more attractive to him. He was not a good looking man. No, he wasn't. So. But uh, yeah. I mean, whatever. Right. So. <laughs> Throughout it all, um, Jenny fought and pleaded for her life. She offered the couple a thousand dollars to let her go, which a thousand dollars back in 1994 was a fair amount of money. 
I thought this um, was in the 80s. See, some of what we say is factual. <laughs> Back to you in the newsroom. <laughs> Back to you in the newsroom. Um, <laughs> in 1986, $1,000 was a lot of money. So there you go. It was. Mm-hmm. It was. Um, so, but um, both Davis and Fincham must have known where this was headed long before they pulled up at Virginia's house. Davis struck her in the head with a rifle butt, fracturing her skull. Um, she still had enough strength to, to raise her hands in a final effort to defend herself um, as she was shot 14 times with hollow point bullets. Uh, she was shot nine times in the head, four to the torso, and one to the groin. Uh, the psychologist on Davis's team suggested that the shot to the groin was the work of Rebecca, as she might have seen Jenny as a rival. However, throughout the trial, Davis claimed he fired all the shots. These two were really the worst. Ooh, big man! Like, on why were campus. you? Yeah, why were you fighting over who shot who? Like, right. you both did it. Like, creeper. Right. Well, like, right? You want those bragging rights or something? Right. Like, people in prison don't take kindly. To no. men who murder women. So nope. yeah. glad you wanted to own that last shot. Right. Um, so here's a little, and I mean long, backstory on Gary Lee Davis. Uh, he was born August 13th, 1944 in Wichita, Kansas. And he was raised by his mother, but he made claims that he was molested and at an early age by his stepbrothers. So, with that, he dropped out of school in the ninth grade. I'm not even sure what age that is. I haven't been in the ninth grade for years. It's like 14 or 15. <laughs> I, I know this because I was just in high school last week. I spent a couple hours there, which was, like, crazy. Yeah. High school kids are bananas right now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They really I'll have are. to tell you guys all my stories after we're done with this program. But... Uh, so he, he joined the Marine Corps in 1961 at the age of 17. Um, there isn't a whole lot about his stint in the Marines, so we'll just move on with his creepiness. Uh, he married his first wife, Tonya Ann Tatum, and had two sons with her before divorcing her five years later due to his increasing alcohol intake and insistent claims that she was cheating on him. He claimed it also fell apart because he was traveling the states at the time as a male stripper. Ew. I know, right? He Can was you not imagine? attractive. No. Mm -mm. Nope, sure wasn't. Ugh. So, at this time, the Marines noticed that he was drinking a lot and becoming more and more paranoid. And so, he was actually medically discharged. He then held a lot of jobs. Meat cutter, cook, factory grunt. You know, the usual when you don't have a high school education. Yep. He also claimed that while he was married, he craved the attention of other women because he's such an attractive man that, you know, just one woman wasn't enough. You so, guys are going to have to look up a picture of him. I won't post it as like the thumbnail because I feel like that's reserved for our victim. But look him up. He's not an attractive person. No. So he, he would like to walk around and expose himself to other women you know waggle your junk at someone and then he would go home and jack off i'm not explaining what that is so we'll just move on then he says that just exposing himself was not enough and he started raping them as well he claims to have raped at least 15 women um those claims have not been substantiated so i don't know if that's true or false or numbers less or more or i don't you know, i again like there's no, nobody's come forward with any of that. So I'm sure it was a lot of like prostitutes that he probably raped or, you know, people that um, didn't report it. It was so, so crazy to be like in the sex work industry in the 80s. Mm -hmm. I just feel like that was such a dangerous time. I mean, even now it's dangerous, but mm -hmm. I'm sure it was prostitutes and he's just, I mean, seriously, look at this guy. Nobody's going to. No. Nobody's going to want no. to engage in right you're not just following him around you're like oh man no well man, he was Mary davis you are a sexy man yeah no no, he was no one thought that no yeah. but apparently people did because he's been married a bunch of times well sometimes you so, just need a man to provide for you right so when he hit his 30s in 1974 he married his second wife leona coates she was the ripe old age of 17 oh my god 
Yeah. They had That's four not marriage. Kids. That's babysitting. Yeah. They had four kids. Um, and they were married for eight years. And that marriage also wasn't what he wanted it to be. He claims that she was pregnant when they met and that they stayed together because she, quote, kept shelling out kids, unquote. Ew. Um, dude, you kept... I know there's Christian people that listen to this, but I'm going to say this. You kept sticking it in her, so she kept having babies. Like, Well, that's how that works. That. Birth control. Mm. Condoms. Like, yeah. Mm-hmm. Pull and pray. You like, have- you got options, man. Yeah. But- yeah. Mm-hmm. <sighs> so she claims that he was abusive when he was drunk, the same as his first wife, and that he was always trying to coerce her into a threesome. So he was actually quoted saying that sober... Him was a nice person, but when he drank, he turned into a total monster. So, I, I mean, that kind I of substantiates her claim. Mm-hmm. So, he ended up spending the last three years of their marriage in trouble with the law. And in 1979, he was arrested for um, an assault in Baca County on a female store clerk. He lured her outside by see- saying he needed help with the ice machine. Once she got outside, he held a knife to her throat and dragged her to the alley. She managed to get away with only wounds to her hands and neck. He took a plea to felony menacing and spent less than a year in jail for that crime. A so, year? Yeah. So then, a few months after he got out of jail, he was at it again. Oh, Gary Lee, you just can't. Incorrigible. So, right. Incorrigible. This time, the victim was a 15-year-old who happened to be the daughter of his wife, Leona's friends. Oh, my God. Yeah. So, he claims that she filed charges against him because he promised to pay her $300 for sex and didn't. But the prosecutors believed her when she said he pulled a knife on her and raped her. For this case, he also managed to plea bargain his way into an eight-year sentence for sexual assault. On a 15-year-old? Yeah, this meant, barring bad behavior, he would be out in four. Yuck. So, now that we're, you know, in the, what is this, the 2000s? It's the 20s again. Uh, The roaring 20s. 20s. The roaring 20s. It's easy for us to see patterns of people. Um, But back then, sexual offender programs were in their infancy and it was mostly believed that people just need to quit drinking and they would be fine i and feel like that's that was not really the answer for everything like oh yeah the, just quit stop drinking, drinking. <laughs> right quit drinking so um davis was also a a model prisoner can you imagine he kept to himself he earned special privileges well, and yeah, went he was emotions... to men right and he went through the motions of an alcohol treatment program and all the while, he was thinking about that first drink he was going to have when he got out. He collected pin pals. Ladies and some men, inmates have 24 hours a day to run scams. Pin pals are one of them. And just know, if you are ever in jail, someone reads your letters before your loved one gets to. Uh-huh. So when you're talking about your chocolate starfish, uh-huh. someone else gets to read that first. You're uh-huh. welcome. Keep that in yeah. the the back yeah. of your mind when you decide mm-hmm. you want to commit some crimes. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so, one of his pen pals was, you guessed it, Rebecca Fincham. Da, 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 da. <laughs> she was introduced to him by one of his prison mates as, because he was writing to her as well. So, she collected prison She collected prison pen pals. She, That's a thing. Yeah. They made a whole show on it. I didn't she know also sent topless photos of her children to some of Gary's prison mates because <gasps> she was a horrible, horrible person. And that, folks, is how two of the worst people on the planet came to be married. So do you think that Rebecca would have committed any murders if she hadn't met Gary? Like, I totally think that Gary would have. What do you think about Rebecca? I don't know if she necessarily would have committed any murders. Um I mean, she might have. I don't know. Um, I didn't read a whole lot about her because it wasn't really about her. Mm-hmm. But um, she sounds like she would be more into the, like, selling her child kind of thing. Yes. Um, uh, to make money because she seemed like she was always broke. So I think she was more of the selling her child type or pimping out her child type. So I don't know. I mean, I'm 
I, everyone can murder. We all have it in us somehow. It's just, it's just how we choose to deal with our, uh, like our problems and stuff. So I don't necessarily know if she would have murdered unless it was under, I think he brought out the, they brought out the worst in each other and they did not make each other better people. They, they did not. But either way, you think she'd all. be in jail? I think she'd be in jail. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep, for sure. Same. Yeah. Yep. So Gary Lee Davis was executed in October of 1997. He was the last person in Colorado to be executed. Did you know that? I did know that actually. Yeah. Yeah. He, um, he, yeah. So Colorado doesn't do that anymore. Really. Um, there's a lot of, uh, we still have the death we have sentence, people on, but yeah, everyone's... we have people on death row, but we've never, we haven't executed anyone since 1997. When good old Gary Lee Davis kicked the bucket, Luna's back. Yep. Hello. <laughs> you are pure. And Rebecca, Rebecca died in prison. So that is perfect. That's where she needed to be. That's where he needed to be. Like, it's not, I mean, good for them. Way to go. Um, do you have anything else that you want to discuss before we let these fine people continue on with their lives? Like uh, maybe your crazy. Oh, my crazy, stuff? my crazy house stuff. So as y'all know, as I've said in multiple episodes, I moved to Illinois. Um, great state, lovely people. However, the people that owned my house before are not as cool as we thought. So FYI, don't make friends with your don't even attempt to make friends with people you buy a house from. They're not your friends. Um, don't, they're, they're not going to be your friends. You're not going to hang out. You're not going to like anything that happens to their house. No, it's business. Yeah. It's so money. we ended up having to rent a 20 cubic foot dumpster to throw out all the stuff that they left here that um, they came to pick up on not a day that we had agreed. So I ended up having to call the police. And I just want to tell you, I'm sorry to all the people who feel like the police don't listen to you because that's how I felt. Um, I called the police. The police come. Um, I'm like, the homeowner's not supposed to be, or the old homeowner is not supposed to be here. They don't own this. They haven't owned it. It's been a week. Like, they don't live here. Legally, um, it's trespassing. They're, right. They're not supposed to be here. We schedule the time that they're supposed to be on Monday. They're not supposed to be here on this weekend. Uh, my wife's not home. I call the cops. Uh, the cops show up. They talk to the old homeowner and his four friends outside and fist bump them and walk up to talk to me. Um, I felt like I was not heard. I felt like I was the racist Karen um, and that I was just this crazy white lady calling the cops on four black men, which nowhere in my whole statement did I ever say that. I said there are four men in my backyard. I don't, they're the old homeowners and three men I don't know. Um, the dispatcher had the nerve to ask me uh, if I had gone out to talk to them. I'm sorry, I'm not going out to talk to four strange, three strange men in my backyard while they're taking stuff out of my yard. Um, granted it was their stuff, but however, they had not lived here since, since Monday. Um, so technically it's not their stuff. We told them that they could keep their, um, patio furniture and their grill there. Um, but they needed to pick it up in a timely manner and to co coordinate with the lawyers on what day that that was. And that day was going to be the following Monday. They just show up when they th thought we were not home and started moving stuff out of the the yard. So unfortunately, um, we are no longer speaking to them. Everything everything in Illinois is done through attorneys on house sales. That's so, actually really common in a lot of states. Yeah, yeah. So you don't talk. I mean, you don't, your realtor isn't really involved with it a whole lot. It's all your attorneys. So mm -hmm. everything goes through the attorneys. Um, we're not we're not speaking to them anymore. It's done with. Um, we're not, not friends with them. Like, but I had a really terrible experience with the police. And I think that's the part that, um, that I'm most disappointed about. Like that I, that I've never experienced that before. Cause I've always had positive experiences with police. Like even when I was a teenager, it wasn't, you know, anytime you had experience, it wasn't bad, but, um, 
I was here and I felt like the crazy, like, I honestly felt like they thought I was the crazy white lady. And Which, should we, like, mention that your wife is black? Right. <laughs> like, my, all, my whole family. Like, I have my family and Candace's family. Like, we're we're an interracial couple like i'm right. not a racist person i've never been a racist person i hate everyone equally like it right. doesn't people do not have a right to be in your yard if they don't live here so that was my thing um so that was my my first week's experience here and i honestly i cried and cried and cried and i just wanted to go home but i'm better now so um there you go there's my experience people <laughs> i'm so sorry <laughs> Sure, and, you know, I mean, just it is what it is. Like, I can't change that. All I can do is move on from that and try to um, not not dwell on it. Like, I'm not the crazy white lady and I know I'm not the crazy white lady. So. So there we go, you know, well, it's true, but that dispatcher should never have told you to go out and confront them. Right. So if that ever happens to anybody. <laughs> Especially as a female, and like, right? I hate playing in this day that and age. Like, card. are you? Yeah, I am not going. I'm sorry, I'm not going outside. No, I'm not going outside. Like, that's no. not happening. No, even as a man, uh, would you go outside and like you don't know the state of four mind? people? No, right, right. Mm -mm. Nope. No, I think that's yeah, awful. So I was really disappointed and in that, and really sad, and like, uh, I was just sad. Uh, sad for. I'm sad for other people that it happened to and i'm sad that um i'm sad that i had that i experienced that but i'm mostly sad because um other people experience this all the time and i think it's terrible i think it's terrible that people are made to feel so small oh absolutely so, yeah so they're on my soapbox sorry about that you could park it if you want okay i mean we're, we're basically just at the end of the episode it. You right. can stand there. Just, okay. I'm just going to stand on it then. That's fair. Sometimes you just like, you need, you need a better view, you know? Right. Right. I do. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we do want to give a shout out to a subscriber. Um, Brenda actually wrote, um, love you both. Love the longer episodes and more commentary and excited to keep listening either on my way to work or on my way home. So thank you so much for the review. You are the best. And Brenda's actually like a super great hairstylist. So if she you really guys are is interested in checking her out, we will share her Instagram. She really is the best. Yeah, she um, is. She is the best. I know. And I confirmed with her that I could share that so that she wasn't oh, getting so bombarded. That she, yeah. <laughs> so you're not um, just like. <laughs> I know. Well, I wanted to mention her a while ago and I, I was like, I'm going to edit it out because I haven't even asked her. <laughs> but I talked to her and she said it was totally fine if I nice. threw that out nice. there. Um, so next week we are going to cover the Kelsey Schelling murder. Um, it actually was one of the most requested cases. So we're really looking forward to covering it. I was actually starting on it last night and there was a lot of things that I forgot about it. I, I remember when it happened and I stayed up on it, but it's it's going to be a good episode. It will. It will be a really good episode episode that was a really terrible thing um i hope you guys are enjoying all of our social media posts i'm having a lot of fun looking up pictures and doing those um you can also leave a review on facebook and start some conversations over there it doesn't yeah. have to be on something we post you guys can post and we will hop in and, and chat with everyone um, that would be super know, fun slide, slide right into our dms we don't hate that oh no we would love that any like anything Preferably mm -hmm. true crime. Because, I mean, if yeah. you say something creepy or weird, we're going to report you and block you. But Probably. don't worry. We will tell don't the police. Don't waggle you your junk weird. at us. No. We don't want that either. No junk Don't waggling. waggle your junk. And mm -hmm. don't confess to any murders to us because we no. will tell. Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, crime fans, that's all we have for you. Uh, thank you guys so much for joining us today. Please keep the case requests coming. You guys sent in some really great cases, and we're really looking forward to covering each of them. Um, if you haven't already, please subscribe so you can be notified every time we upload. If you enjoy listening to us every week, please leave us a review on Apple Podcasts. We will pick another listener next week who leaves us a review to give a shout out to. New episodes are released every Friday at 1030 a.m. Mountain Standard Time. Please follow us on Instagram at Colorado Crime Pod 
or on Facebook at Colorado Crime Podcast for information on next week's episode, as well as other true crime happenings. We hope you have a beautiful day wherever you are. And as always, stay safe. Gotta bounce now. <laughs> <laughs>